Hey guys, Endeavor here. I'm just going to start with a quick jungle guide. A lot of the stuff I've talked about is pretty basic. Um, things I mention all the time in stream, but I think it's good to have a repository of like all this information so you guys have something you can always refer back to. So I'm going to start off with my room page. I start with Fleet Footwork, Triumph, uh, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Magical Footwear, and Futures Market. The reason why I take Fleet Footwork is uh, so that I can get easier jungle clear. With the nerf to the E so that it doesn't stun minions anymore, I mean monsters anymore, um, it definitely is difficult to clear the jungle camp. And Fleet Footwork, Fleet Footwork adds quite a bit of healing and um, pretty good kiting potential when you come when you enter fights. So, I mean, obviously PTA is better for, um, for fighting in the early game, but I think Fleet Footwork is not so bad either. You can definitely kite out better and you can chase better. Sometimes I'm able to get kills just because of fleet, uh, fleet footwork, so I like it currently. Um, I take magical footwear because it gives me free 300 gold. Uh, I think this is really nice because I can focus on just rushing warrior and get my power spike as quickly as possible. I don't have to waste 300 gold on buying boots. And then features market. Um, one reason I like to get this is because it helps me buy talisman early if I do an early back. Uh, once you get talisman, it's pretty easy to farm. And another reason why is because for Triforce components, just with, with the way the jungle works, you often go back to base with around like 900, 800 gold. And with Futures Market, you can um, cheat that gold system to buy a component of Triforce on your back uh, pretty easily. So uh, I think it helps make the purchasing uh, of Camille's build much less awkward. I think Triforce... Uh, is definitely a hard item to build as a jungler, and this rune helps a lot with that. On to the pathing. So I often start with red buff, and then after I move over, I'm gonna like auto versus go down so like I do this quickly. After um, I move over towards towards Gromp, what I do when I do Gromp is like I always kill the little one first, and then I move over to hit the big one. You're going to probably need to use both pots to kill this, and I usually smite this because um, once I finish this, I have enough health to gank bottom if I want to, or just go straight back to base. The reason why I say I go straight back, I go straight back to base is because with, well, if I had, alright, well, not with this gold value, but you know, with the gold value, I should be around like 300 gold when basing at this time, and I can buy talisman. Instantly with Features Market, I can also get a ward too, a control ward. And I can run straight towards the top side of the map and make my way towards blue buff. So doing this allows me to to be on the map quickly, uh, to get to farm efficiently, and I can ensure my blue is not taken. And once I finish this, I'll be around the three minute mark, uh, which is like just in time for Scuttle Crab. My goal is to have level three before that time and this pathing allows me to do so. After I do scuttle crab here, I can usually look for a gank, mid or top, or invade to like check if raptors is up because when I have talisman, I can easily uh, clear raptors or I do a transition, a transition gank into the bot side scuttle and from there on I, will, I can do raptors and get ready for my 430 respawn on Krugs. So it is a pretty um, okay path. One counter to it is that while you're doing red buff and Krugs, um, you your the enemy jungler can just take your blue, or even like just contest it easily because if he does red Raptors and Krugs, he will be level three, and if he decides to invade blue instantly, you will be doing blue buff while you're level two, and he will arrive when you're level three. Um, I definitely had this issue when I was facing Tarzan especially, he punished me really hard for this path. And what I ended up having to do was just relegate blue buff and do my wolves and path towards this way, which wasn't so bad. I mean, usually um, when I jungle Camille, I don't really do wolves and Gromp that much anyways. I tend to delay them. My main focus is to farm Raptors and Krugs and respawn because they give so much XP. Uh, so in any case, another, I'm trying to think about a, another path that I should take uh, to deal with junglers that do that kind of invade, uh, but I'm testing it right now, so I'll let you know, guys. I'll let you guys know later how that works out. But one way to deal with this this blue invade is is just to put an early ward here. Um, you can put an early ward around the 50 minute mark, go back, and then buy a red trinket, 
and then you can um, and then you can go to your red buff. And by the time you finish Krugs, your red trinket will be up, which means that you can you can easily sweep this for a gank, or you can go back to base, sweep it back for a trinket, and you'll have your trinket back. So this ward kind of helps out um, the spot if they're gonna come this way, or it doesn't really spot this path, but I mean you could put a ward here, but then you don't see them coming from this way. It's kind of hard to place. Um, so wherever you feel comfortable, it just gives me some, some, uh, some information if the enemy jungler is coming to steal my blue or not. Uh, and builds. So I mentioned about pathing already. Uh, what else can I talk about pathing? Actually, I can talk about how I tend to do uh, raptors because I think, I think some people get stuck up on this. So let me be level three. You generally only want to do uh, raptors once you have your W and your E. So what I like to do is first is use my talisman for damage uh, over time. So I'm going to sweep this first and then just start hitting them a little bit. And then use my E back here to hit all of the creeps. And then from then on I can just like uh, easily clear. The talisman uh, damage over time helps a lot with clearing. And that's how I do the raptors. That's how I do it almost every time. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I think this way I just mentioned like gives you the most amount of damage over time with your talisman. Uh, builds are pretty important. What I tend to rush is warrior. Um, over, t I don't get TM up because with fleet footwork you don't need the, um, you don't need the, you don't need the TM up for for farming. Uh, fleet is more than good enough, and with futures market, if you think about it. Um, Warrior and Tiamat will actually cost the same amount because Futures Market will add about like 200 extra gold for me to per, for me to go into debt for. And when I compare 60 AD to 25 AD, I think you get much better power spike with the Warrior, obviously. And with Fleet, you need all the damage you can get. After Warrior, I tend to build components of my Triforce. How I build that is based off of the matchup I'm going against. So let's say I'm going against a Hecarim or Olaf or a Hecarim or or a Kha'Zix where like it's really difficult to um, to beat them in DPS battles. Kha'Zix because he ults, Hecarim because he just has like insane like close range DPS. I might go for Phage and Sheen so that I can kite a little bit better and run away a little fa faster uh, with the Phage movement speed and have a better burst. So I'll be going for mostly like uh, burst trades and not really trying to all in uh, if I meet those kind of, kinds of characters. If I'm going against someone that doesn't have a lot of CC or utility, like let's say a Graves or a Nidalee um, or an Elise, I might opt for um, Stinger instead, where, I, where I'm mostly focused on getting as much auto attacks off as possible. So those are some examples of, of like how I determine uh, what I build. It's basically determining whether I'm going to kite the 1v1 or whether I'm going to all in the 1v1. Um, if I'm going to all in, I focus on Stinger and Phage. If I'm going to kite, I focus on Sheen and Phage, whichever one is more available to me at the time. Uh, after, after the uh, let me add some gold so it's a little bit easier to to visualize. After I get Triforce, I tend to go for a more tanky route, so I start working towards Gargoyle Stoneplate and probably Sterix too. Uh, these are this is my bread and butter items. These four, I think they make a really strong combo. Uh, the reason why I like Gargoyle Stoneplate is because in team fights, it makes you so much tankier. Let me level up so I can showcase why I like Stoneplate. Um, you can use your you can use your Stoneplate to get out of sticky situations because like sometimes you have to engage for your team, and once you go in, whoops, that was a bad E, but once you go in, you might want to like ult and then like get out, but you'll as you take the damage, it's nice to pop that stone plate so that you increase your health and and like uh, basically become unkillable. Another nice thing about it, a stone plate, is that um, as you charge your Q, uh, once you go in and use it, you can just pop your stone plate, and then you can charge your Q again pretty safely. And when your stone plate comes down, oh, well, when your stone plate comes down, you'll be able to um, to, to let up your true damage Q. Uh, if you notice with stone plate, if I use it while on stone plate, my damage actually gets reduced by a bit. Uh, for some reason, true damage gets reduced for Camille, so I have to wait for the Gargoyle stone plate to go down. But overall, the tankiness gives you a free ability to charge your Q uh, in the middle of the fight without taking too much damage. 
So that's why I like the item. Being nice Some other so items I consider um, are Randuin. Whoops. Oh, well, okay. Uh, Randuins and what is it? Randuins and um, yeah, Randuins, Thornmail or Magic Resist for the Adaptive Helm, depending on like um, the team composition. And sometimes I even opt for uh, for Knight's Vow and Zeke's Herald if I'm gonna be really insane. Or this, uh, I get these items if I feel like our fight purely depends on uh, winning the winning the team fight. And if I'm not that ahead, I think that this these items are really good for supporting my ADC or whatever DPS we have on our team to keep them alive. And it helps make me tanky too in team fights. I think these are really underrated items that really help uh, level boost your um, ADC or mid laner to like insane carry potential if you trust them. So sometimes I build this. It's hard to explain exactly when, but I guess the overall picture is like if you trust them, if you feel like you have to win team fights, um, and and if you're like you're not, if you don't feel like you can like carry that easily, like if you. Feel like your team comp is just too strong to do damage in so um oh boots some people on stream have asked me uh when i rush boots over over rushing uh triforce because sometimes i i don't upgrade the sometimes i upgrade boots instantly after warrior sometimes i i just go for triforce uh the easy i guess the best answer to describe this is like if there's a really easy boots decision. Like if I'm going against double AP, like AP jungler, AP mid, and they have a lot of CC, I'm going to get Merc Treads pretty early. If if they have like a Graves or a Kha'Zix or, like, or they have like a lot of AD on their team, um, well, yeah, if they have a lot of AD on their team, forget the, the jungle stuff. If they have a lot of AD on their team, I might rush Ninja Tab Eyes. Um, a big portion of my decision is whether these boots will help me win the 1v1 against a jungler. Uh, if they don't, I might opt to get uh, upgrade these boots later. Uh, so I guess if it's a hard decision to figure out whether to buy the upgrade the boots or not, that's when I get Triforce instead. Uh, I don't really get the boots for movement speed. It's more for the armor or the MR or the utility that, that it provides. So. Um, Overall, if you can't decide, go Triforce. If it's a really easy answer, then upgrade the boots. And then lastly, I'll talk about matchups. Uh, I think that Camille tends to struggle against against champions that are really good at 1v1ing. So you have uh, Kha'Zix, Nidalee because she's really, she's really good at leveling quickly and she can avoid wards easily. Um, Hecarim and Olaf. Olaf is really difficult because uh, if you go in on him, he can just throw Qs at you forever, and there's no way you'll ever beat him with Conqueror. He's like so strong. The only way I beat him is if like I get insanely fed. Usually, uh, with Fleet, you have to you have to kind of whoops relegate a lot of the the pressure that that you would normally have with PTA and focus on just winning the map. Once you get good at controlling the map with Camille, that's when you can get your kills off of ganks and counter ganks and eventually get the lead to take over the jungle and, and 1v1 the enemy, enemy jungler. Till then, um, you're pretty much just farming and looking for opportunities to gank. I don't usually try to 1v1 the enemy jungler unless um, unless it's like an Evelyn, which is like a really simple matchup for me just because she doesn't have an easy escape and I can pretty much DPS her. Her DPS is just as weak as mine. So, uh, but it favors me in general since I'm AD. So I guess overall, when it comes to matchups, I think a lot of it is trial and error, and you'll have to like, I guess, try it out and like learn for yourself um, as you attempt these kinds of one v ones. But the general picture is that you lose a lot of them, and you should try to just focus on kiting it out if you end up facing them, and play off of your team and just go for ganks instead. Uh, <laughs> cause I could go over like exactly like how to, how to 1v1 every single jungler, but that's, I think that would take, that's not really the purpose of this video. I'm more just trying to showcase how I build Camille, how I jungle with her, what's my pathing and what I tend to play for. Um, so thank you. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll probably go over other concepts later on with Camille, but I, I wanted to release a basic jungle guide first. 
and hopefully this uh, solves some of uh, your questions. And if you have any more, just leave uh, questions in the comments, or um, you can ask me during the stream. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you guys have a good day.